Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, <clears throat> and this video that I'm about to show you, I've probably been needing to do again for a while. Many of you that have not been here have not seen me do this before, but I'm about to show you something that's pretty fascinating. It's also pretty scary. Now, this was inspired because I was speaking to my father, who is the official father of the Digital Asset Investor channel, and also Cryptopolis, who is my friend who I met in Las Vegas when I went to Las Vegas for the uh, World CryptoCon. Um, and Cryptopolis is also, many of you may not know, he's the official treasurer of the Digital Asset Investor Channel. Uh, my father is also the, I think he's the um, global official global economic advisor for the channel. But anyway, these two guys inspired me to do this video today. My dad, I was, I was speaking with him on the phone and he was telling, he's in real estate and he was telling me <clears throat> That he was explaining to uh, someone uh, the other day about they were asking him where he thought they should be putting their money and he was basically explaining to them what I'm going to explain to you right now but I'm going to give you some visuals I'm going to spell it all out because let me let's let me be very very clear we are going to experience a an extremely nasty stock market crash. I don't care what these clowns on CNBC say to you. I don't click care what your financial advisor says to you. We've never had a setup for a greater not not financial crisis, but mega depression in the history of the world. Now, digital assets could be a part of saving that, and I'll we'll get into that. But I want you to listen and listen good because it is coming. Make no mistake, the crash of crashes is, is coming. There's not a doubt in my mind about this. And, I, and it's really sad that our governments around the world have put us in this place, but they have. So listen up and listen good. Now, before I go into this, I'm going to tell you, I was a financial advisor. For those of you that don't know, I was a financial advisor from Morgan Stanley back in my day. Okay. I am no longer a financial advisor, but I do have an understanding of these markets. I've got a FedEx guy. Oh, good. He just, he just rang the doorbell, so I don't have to go and answer it. But he just delivered my Apple Watch, which is what Santa Claus gave me for Christmas. <laughs> I think that's what that is. Anyway, um, and I got the, by the way, I got the Apple Watch because um, it has a function on it where it can set an alarm off if I go into AFib. Since I've got that, I wanted to make sure that I had something around my wrist so that if I ever, when they take me off, you know, blood thinners and all that, that I'll have something if I go into it that so I'm aware. Okay, sorry to talk about that. The FedEx guy interrupted me. All right, so this all started this morning when Cryptopolis, um, he, I, I was on his Twitter feed and, and um, I saw some, this and I showed this to you in the last video. Now, Bank of England's, um, this is Bank, I showed this uh, article here. Bank of England's Carney says central banks are low on ammunition, okay? So, and I read you this quote, it's generally true that there's much less ammunition for all the major central banks than they previously had. And I'm of the opinion that this situation will persist for some time. All right, so let's go on to the next thing. This is something that we've been talking about for the last few weeks. Really, I think, I want to say it's since September. Uh, why the U.S. repo market blew up and how to fix it. Um, to keep the markets running smoothly at the end of 2019, the U.S. Federal Reserve pumped half a trillion dollars into an obscure but crucial part of the global financial system that suffered a seizure several months ago. Now, what this is, is this is, this is a part of our um, our central banks and our, our governments, and it's not just the U.S., it's governments around the world. We now live in a world where you're not allowed to have the cyclical environment in the, in the stock market, which you have in any market. Anytime the market begins to go down, they feel like they've got to start printing money and doing all kinds of things, and they'll, they come up with all kinds of names for them. Now, um, what, 
what CNBC does not want to tell you, um, and they'll tell you every once in a while, what they don't want to tell you is that all of these, these different gimmicks that the different governments use to interrupt what would happen in the free market if there actually was a free market. In an actual free market, if they weren't pumping the money in and all this every once in a while, the market would collapse and they know this and this is why they continue to do this. So let's take this down. Well, let's see. Well, I wanted to show you that for some reason, I'm wondering if I'm wondering if as a part of this whole Iran thing, I'm wondering if there's a tax going on on the Internet because I've seen the Internet go down a few times this morning. What I, what I was going to show you on this screen right here was I was going to show you the drug, the front of the Drudge Report, which basically is talking about how Trump's going to address the nation about the Iranian strike that happened last night. I just wanted to show you that to illustrate to you that we're now we now have a flashpoint, a potential thing that could cause all this to come tumbling down. Now, this is what I'm showing you here. This is what it looks like when your government and, and the governments around the world come up with all kinds of QEs and, and bailouts and all kinds of different things and different um, things to pump money into the markets so that that money will eventually stow its flow into the stock market and it can give the appearance of a healthy economy. This is what's happened since 2009. Ever since the financial crisis, they have literally papered over the problem with QE1, 2, 3, 4, whatever you call them. They call it, they had all kinds of, they called it, they called TARP, the bailouts, and then they had all kinds of different programs, different names for it, and they call it all kinds of different things. But all it is, is, is pumping money into the system to prevent the system from collapsing, which it will eventually do, because eventually, as Mark Carney said, they will run out of ammo. Okay? All right. So that's what the stock market has done over the last 10 years. Now, let's look at, this is, this is just one snapshot of some of what has gone on during that time. <clears throat> and I told you they came up with all kinds of names for them. QE was one of the first. <clears throat> they did a QE1, a QE2, and a QE3. So let's look what the markets, how the markets reacted. This was Q1 when it was announced. Okay, this right here, market anticipate, and, and th this is Q1 announced, and you get this blip up here. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Now, when, when the market anticipated the end of Q1, look what happens. It collapses. Then Q1 was, QE1 was expanded. And then we get this. QE1 ends. We get this. <laughs> I mean, you can't make this stuff up, folks. It's the biggest financial joke if it wasn't so scary in the history of the world. And they all know it's a joke. They all know how scary it is. That's why you're seeing all this repo stuff right now. And that's why you're seeing Trump do the same thing. He's doubling down on it. He's telling them to keep interest rates low. Uh, artificially low, which is a part of what they've done, and he's telling he's telling them to pump money into the system, which he said, which he ironically, and uh, this is not a political thing, because po politics has nothing to do with it. Both sides have done this when they're trying to get elected. Both sides do it. But anyway, keep looking at this. So QE2 ends, and look what happens. And then they come up with a new term. They call this Operation Twist. <laughs> I mean. Like I said, you can't make this stuff up. It is so ridiculously silly and scary, and it's crazy. So Operation Twist is announced. And then look what happens to the market. And meanwhile, CNBC is going out there and telling everyone who are the average investors, see, the Fed has come to save us again. And they did it in every single one of these instances. And then it said that mark, market anticipates the end of Twist. And then it goes down. And then Operation Twist is extended and it goes up. Bernanke hints at QE3. <laughs> and see now, right here, Bernanke hints at QE3 and the market goes down. Well, it's because everybody started to say, wait a minute, this is ridiculous. That's what happens here. And then ultimately, all the money being pumped in, and I'm sure plenty of marketing by CNBC and all the tr traditional financial news out outlets, it eventually led to this, and this is what we've experienced, nothing but this, for the last 11 years. Now, and we, we, we have to show you this in order to, to finish this story out. 
you can't tell the story without telling the story of the ridiculous debt that we're now under as a result of all of this mess. Nothing's been done about it. Nothing's going to be done about it. And in my opinion, nothing can be done about it. We're now $23.1 trillion in debt. And look at this. Debt per taxpayer, $187,000 per taxpayer. That's how that breaks down. Debt per citizen, $70,000. $70, okay, so now let's look at this. This is just what the market has looked look like since back in the depression and I just wanted to show you this just to show you that this is what markets do markets go up mark euphoria sets in markets crash it happens it's the natural order of things um it's it's the way markets work it's the way life works um you know fall winter spring summer life is a cycle people get greedy the greedy being greedy catches up to them they lose everything they have. This is the way life works, okay? And and people people win, people lose, um, people succeed, people fail. This is life. Life is a cycle. Markets are a cycle. It is not normal. It it, it is completely abnormal what the the governments and central banks around the world have done for the last eleven years. And I think they've done it because they knew if they did if they stopped doing it that the world would come crashing down, okay? Now, let's look at, let's take it in a step further. These are the list of recessions in the United States from the, from the inception of the United States since it all began. These are the list of recessions. What I want to show you is the dura duration of the recessions. I want you to see how long a recession lasts on average. Look at this. As we go down, this is from 1785. Four years, four years, three years, two years, three years, six months, six years, one year, one year, one year. As we keep going down, look at the duration column. Two years, four years, one, 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 one year, eight months, two years, one year, five years, three, one, 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 one. As you keep going down and then you go down here, now we're at the Great Depression. Look at the duration. Um, three years, one year, um, eight months, 11 months, eight months. Are you noticing a pattern here, folks? The pattern should make you sick to your stomach when you're thinking about those stocks that you are invested in. Okay. One year, eight months. We keep going down. Let's, let's see. There was one. Let me, let me go back up. I'm sorry. Um, duration. Um, that was the duration of the thing. Hold on. Time since the previous recession. Okay. One year, four years, six years, three years, three years, three years. This is the number I was wanting to look at. Eight years. Uh, four years, one year, seven years, 10 years. All right, this is the one I want you to look at. It's early 2000s. Now, all of this government, this mega government intervention, this really started to happen because it didn't feel this way when I was younger. It really started to happen in the last 20, 30 years more than it ever has before. This is what I want you to see. The longest recession in the history of the United States was 10 years. We are now at 11, folks. I don't know what you need to see besides that right there. We're at 11, okay? Now, but here's, I'm about to show you the good news. Here's the good news. This is the exciting news. This is the exciting news for those in the, you, those of you who are with me, who have been with me, those of you who are in digital assets, who have been a part of this and understand what we are a part of. This is where it begins to get interesting. So, on, but I want, before I leave that, on, I want to point out, what I've always read is that the average recession takes place every six years. That recession has been put off. The governments of the world have put those recessions off. There has been more monetary irresponsibility than there has been in the history of the world in the last 10 years. That's just a fact. If anybody's being honest with themselves. Now, it, here's where the opportunity comes, folks, because there's always opportunity in disaster. I don't care what anybody tells you. Now, 2000, this is a Medium article. 2019, the inception of the world's seventh asset class. Okay, let's look. I've talked about this a lot over the course of this channel. The original six asset classes, commodities, fixed income, equities, foreign exchange, FX, infrastructure, property, our homes. Okay, those are the more or less the seven asset classes. Okay, if you go down here, 
get down to this part right. Let's see. Um, let me see. I think it was down lower. We will see. No, it was higher. He says up here, I'm sorry, market manipulation. Um, I'm missing it. Let's see. Female that changed the world. What's the seventh? Okay, here it is. What is the seventh asset class? I believe that the seventh asset class is decentralized blockchain, cryptocurrency, or um, cryptocurrency as it is common, commonly known. I know that some people reading this will let out a side, da, da, da. All right. Look no further than this, folks. If you want to know if this is the seventh asset class, just go to FidelityDigitalAssets.com. Fidelity, Digital Fidelity, which is one of the largest asset managers in the world, they literally will tell you on their website that this is the new asset class. Okay? Enough said. I think BAX, if you go to BAX's website, they will tell you as well. It is the new asset class. Okay? Now, moving along. Here's an article from Forbes. Bitcoin joins the ranks of safe haven. So, when you have a market collapse in history, when you have a market collapse, collapse, people run for the safe havens. But do you know what they've never had in, in the, never in my lifetime have they had probably in two or three lifetimes? Okay, because I think bonds were the last new asset class and bonds were created in the 1600s. Do you know what they what what people are going to have in this crash that they've never had? They're going to have the seventh asset class. Okay. Now, the people that know that Bitcoin has no use case have created it. They've positioned Bitcoin as a safe haven of a, a, a safe haven asset. Okay. Now, let me read to you the beginning of this article, and it's called "Bitcoin Joins the Ranks of Safe Haven Assets." So, when people hit the exits on this nightmare of a stock market, here's Listen to this. Bitcoin recently joined the ranks of safe haven assets. According to Chris Reinertson, chief marketing officer of Rhythm Technology, safe haven assets are assets where investors park their cash at a time of rising global uncertainties and as they flee risky assets like stocks. Traditionally, listen up. And while I'm reading this, remember, I just showed you the U.S. debt clock. So one of these, I believe, is going to be removed as a safe haven in the next crisis or sooner rather than later. It says traditionally U.S. Treasuries, gold and precious metals and the Swiss franc have been considered safe haven assets. And more recently, so has Bitcoin. Now, I mentioned it in my earlier video this morning. What has Switzerland been doing? They've been leading the way in what Goldman Sachs was announced it's doing yesterday, which is opening digital banks. They're opening digital banks because they're going to trade and store digital assets. Well, the Swiss franc has been a safe haven because Switzerland has always been where the wealthy people of the world flee with their wealth for protection. Okay, so it's not a coincidence that the Swiss franc has been the one of the safe haven asset classes. Well, now that the U.S. is buried up to their eyeballs in debt, this isn't where I'm going to be. Well, what does that leave? Gold, which I will always believe in gold and silver. Most of the people listening to me will. The Swiss franc, sure, why not? And now Bitcoin, but not just Bitcoin, because the digital assets that are going to survive are going to be the ones that have real utility, as Brad Garlinghouse said. So we've got Bitcoin, which I own. OK, we've got gold, silver. We've got the Swiss franc. When the exits are hit, here's what's happening with Bitcoin from the crypto utility guy. Bitcoin proves itself as a safe haven investment while it outperforms gold in the same week. Bitcoin's up 16 percent versus gold up 6 percent. Not a coincidence that XRP had a, a plus 11 or 12 percent day this week either. Now, here's the coin market cap. Here's what's going on on coin market cap, right? You see a lot of green. We've gone up approximately over $20 billion this week alone. People smell the fear. So here's what I encourage you all to do. If you are not an XRP investor, I want you to do it this week or uh, do it now, okay? I want you to go because here's the thing. Bitcoin got a free pass in digital assets. That's the truth. It was designated a safe haven asset because it's got a limited amount and that's a good thing. But it doesn't, it's not going to have any real utility. 
Bitcoin is is going to be, I think it will remain a safe haven asset. It's got the scarce, scarcity. It's only going to have 21 million. But listen to me closely, folks. People are going to hit the exits from this stock market. It is going to crash, okay? Whether it crashes today or after Trump's election or whatever, it's going to crash. And when it crashes, people are going to hit the exits. And I believe those exits are going to be gold, silver. They're going to be digital assets. They're going to be Bitcoin. And they are going to be XRP because it's the digital asset that has utility. It's going to have more utility. It's going to have all of the money of the world because it's going to bridge all of the money of the world, folks. And I'll say that again because one of my other friends told me this and he said it five times in a phone conversation the other day. XRP is going to be the bridge currency and all of the money in the world is going to flow, be flowing at different times through XRP. That's what it's going to be as a bridge currency. You can call that a bold statement, but when I'm right, you're not just going to have the money flowing from exiting the stock market. It's going to be flowing through as it being a bridge currency. What's going to happen is going to shock the world. That's what's going to happen. So this brings me to this. If you do nothing, folks, if you do nothing today, go to ripple.com, study the company, read about the people, read about their customers, read about what their software does, read about what they say about XRP. And then I want you to go to xrparcade.com and go to XRP Arcade and spend some time on this website. Everything up here is great information and it will lead you to other information about XRP, which is the greatest digital asset ever created and has the greatest utility. Okay, go study that. And I want to draw your attention to one final thing. This is from Jonathan D at XRP underscore YD7. This is an article. This right here summarizes why I ended up at XRP. Okay. When I studied the list on CoinMarketCap back in 2013, I could not find any digital asset on that list that had the smartest guys in a room on their, in the room on their team that were very obviously approaching digital assets the smart way and the responsible way from the beginning and they were going directly to the regulators to work with governments because the way the world works folks as i sit here at age 45 the way the world works is that the powers that be it doesn't matter how bad you hate them it doesn't matter if you hate bankers and hate central banks what matters is that these are the people that run the world and they're going to always run the world and they're going to land on their feet. And I believe that their feet are going to land firmly with XRP. And I believe it's the smart play and all, and I believe it always has been the one. I believe it was a plan folks. And when you look at this article right here, you think it's a coincidence that the woman who started backed, which is going to be the company that brings digital asset brings wall street into all this all of a sudden she pops up and gets an appointment in the u.s senate says the former chief executive of, of bitcoin derivatives exchanges back is to join the committee that oversees commodity futures trading commission raising concerns of a possible conflict of interest and here it says this is laughable it says amidst concerns of her appointment would create that her appointment would create a conflict of interest. Loeffler told Wall the Wall Street Journal that she worked hard to comply with both the letter and the spirit of the Senate's ethics rules and will continue to do so every day. I will recuse myself if, if needed in a case by case basis. Now, really, folks, really, if do you need any further proof? Look, the people that run the world run the world. And they're going to run the world, okay? It's not a, XRP, XRP is not a coincidence. Bitcoin is not a coincidence. I own Bitcoin and XRP, folks. I own them both. And it's not a coincidence that the people that are running the world all of a sudden get appointed to be in the Senate. It's not a coincidence that Ripple gets their way into the door with every central banker in the world and is working with 50 of them. It's not a coincidence that these things have happened I've watched them happen since 2013. Folks, people from the stock market will be hitting the exits. And I think these people have known it all along because I think they're all 
These are the powerful people. These are the people that run things. So it's time to man up and understand what's coming. Now, I'm going to end with this. When you truly believe in what you're doing, it shows and it pays. Winners in life are those who are excited about where they're going. The digital asset investor is excited. I am the digital asset investor. I am not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family that winners in life that are those who are those who are excited about their, where they're going. And I couldn't be more excited. Thank you for listening.